Hey, Comic Universe, uh, it's me, the Real Manos. I'm here to talk about the first episode of CW's Batwoman. Now, before I begin, I think it might be important to talk about the history of this character, uh, which some of you may not know. So, the uh, Batwoman started out as a 1966 film by Jerry Warren in order to try and capitalize on the popularity of Batman at the time. The film involves Batwoman and her Batgirls trying to defeat the evil Ratfink, who is trying to get the atomic hearing aid so that he can listen in on all conversations. What, what, what's that? Oh, excuse me for a second. Uh-huh. Nothing to do with it? Okay. All right. I'm afraid this actually has nothing to do with the wild, wild world of Batwoman. My apologies. Uh, let me read up on this, and uh, I'll let me chat to the credits. Hey, Comic Universe. Of course, I'm just kidding. Uh, for those of you who are in the know, uh, Batwoman is a character that's kind of been around since the 1950s. She made her debut as Kathy Kane, and she was designed as a proof positive that Batman and Robin weren't gay and weren't promoting the gay lifestyle, and that was because of the, uh, the book The Seduction of the Innocent, which had been pressuring comic book companies to behave in a more social norm for the 1950s. Uh, she had kind of knocked around for a while until disappearing and being killed off. Uh, cut to deep into the post-crisis era, all the way up until the 2000s, we're almost at the 52 area, um, she appears in the miniseries or maxi-series 52. And as a big middle finger to Seduction of the Innocent, she is not only unable to be Bruce's love interest because of two things. Number one, she's his cousin. And number two, she is gay herself. Ha ha. So, um... The uh, character is uh, kind of repackaged and redesigned, uh, and essentially she is, like I said, Bruce's cousin. She's a rich socialite, but she's been kind of in a depressed state because she was in the military. She was kicked out because of being gay. Uh, her uh, mother and sister were, were uh, killed when she was a child, and she has been kind of trying to find herself until Batman inspires her uh, to become Batwoman. Now, uh, the new CW series uh, essentially tells that story. We uh, go back. We, she was already appearing in the, the most recent uh, crisis um, event, but I think it's a good idea to kind of like set up her story first. So let's, let's not pick it from there. Let's go back and you know, tell the story we need to. Uh, we start with Kate narrating to someone about uh, trying to find herself and, uh, you know, her story wasn't exactly what she expected. Meanwhile, uh, while she's like deep diving and training for that, uh, for whatever she wants to do, she hasn't kind of figured out what she wants to do just yet, how she wants to do it. But Gotham City has been Batman free for three years. Also, coincidentally, Bruce Wayne free. Mm. And... Kate's father uh, has created this uh, security force called Crows that's apparently been doing the job in Batman's absence. And, and a big ceremony that's symbolically letting go of Batman, they're deciding to turn off the bat, symbol, uh, bat signal. And that's interrupted by a new supervillain named Alice, who has this Alice in Wonderland kind of thing going on. Maybe she's inspired by the Mad Hatter. Uh, that's the fun thing about being a Batman villain is like, hey, if there's a public domain character, you can completely take that concept and just run with it. So that's what she's doing. She kidnaps one of Kane's main agents, a woman named uh, Sophie, Sophie Ward. This news gets to Kate, and she immediately goes back to Gotham because she and Sophie were a couple briefly when they were in the military. Now, they were caught... And they were both given the choice, like, you either uh, disavow uh, your homosexuality or quit the military. And Kate didn't sign this, and Sophie did. And I 
I like the fact that uh, the relationship she has with someone was connected to uh, her backstory with uh, the military. But she goes on this search of trying to find Sophie and rescue her from Alice. While she's doing that, she runs into Lucius Fox's son, who is very overly protective of Bruce Wayne's office. And she finds out why when she stumbles into the Batcave and uh, she essentially tells him, look, you're going to suit me up for this. Uh, of course, she goes and rescues uh, Sophie and figures out how to start a new life of kind of like fighting the good fight as Batwoman. Uh, partly inspired by the fact that, like in the comic, her mother and sister were killed in an early age. And what I like is it's more tied to Batman. Batman tried to save them, and she had, had kind of like partly blamed him for their deaths of not being able to save them. She discovers very soon after discovering the Batcave that Bruce did his best to save them uh, and had deeply regretted, regretted it and did his best to find the body of her sister ever since and never really let go of it. That meant a lot to her and I think that has a lot to do with her growing as a person, uh, being able to let go of some resentment if she can let go of it that she had towards Batman. Uh, because she was close to Bruce, and now she kind of understands a little bit better. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, story starts, uh, basically, Kate's journey as Batwoman. She even, like, you know, does the whole thing where she shows up uh, in his costume. It's not totally the Batwoman costume yet. It's mostly his costume uh, fitted for a woman. And that kind of gets a new hope going over in Gotham. Like, hey, Batman was here. Uh, Batman's back. And then, of course, spoiler alert, I guess, but if you've seen the show or you've seen the comic, you realize that uh, she puts it together at the end that Alice is her long-lost sister. And that's how we start with uh, this series. Now, let's go into uh, the good, the bad, and uh, what I thought overall. Uh, first off... Uh, there's a nice kind of like uh, Christopher Nolan vibe to this. Now, the producers of The CW have been mining uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, work in the Batman trilogy, you know, for years for all of their shows. And this one, like, they're actually doing a Bat thing. So, yeah, go into it. Go nuts. And it does almost feel like... like a soft sequel to the Nolan universe. I mean, Batman's taken off. And, uh, you know, Batwoman showing up. I mean, this is almost, yeah, it almost does kind of feel like I'm, I understand they probably can't make it technically a sequel to the Nolan films, but it kind of does fit. You know, if they're allowed to, like, play it loose like that, it could. Uh, but in a way, it's at least a spiritual successor if they can't, like, be a technical successor. Uh, the acting is really good. I like uh, quite a bit of acting and uh, Ruby Rose and the whole uh, cast. They really are doing their best to kind of take things seriously, but not too seriously. Not everybody's like over chewing their parts. Alice actually, I think, is a really nice example of subtly playing a over-the-top kind of character. She's in the costume. She's kind of playing things thoughtfully and cruelly. She beats the crap out of uh, Kate a couple of times in this show. Um, and, you know, I think she does kind of, like, play the wise choice of, like, you know, look, I got the costume. I don't need to, like, oh, go over the top with this performance. Uh, and I think it works uh, to take it a little bit more seriously. Uh, and, of course, you know, the her, her father, uh, Sophie, the supporting cast of, like, her new family, I think everyone does a pretty solid job. The, uh, let's see, of course, like I said before, we have a lot of, like, Nolan kind of stuff here. Like, the climax feels very much like uh, the climax in Dark Knight. It's <laughs> particularly, like, the Joker sequence of what I'm talking about. Um, and I think that I, I think I've had that all in my notes as far as what I liked as far as that's concerned. Yeah, uh, I do like the fact that uh, Batman is connected to the loss of her family. I like the fact that uh, Sophie is also the relationship that got her booted out of the military. And we also have this twist where, look, it's a little bit more complex than, you know, she's just the girlfriend. Like, no, they actually have some, like, dicey, tense uh, 
drama going on between the two of them. Like, you know, she, you know, didn't back her up uh, in the military. Now she's gone off and got married to a dude. Uh, now, of course, we'll see how that plays and develops. Uh, you know, maybe she has, like, you know, moved on from Kate, or maybe not. We'll see. Uh, the, I guess, what I, I think that's all of the real strong positives. Uh, I do like the scene where she puts it together and figures out that uh, Alice is her sister. Now, let's, uh, let's go to some uh, negatives here. Uh, first off, the narration. The narration is my least favorite type of narration. It is all exposition, and it's very plainly, woodenly written, and it um, explains stuff that the, fil that the TV show is showing us. And I've noticed this in the past with some of the other shows from the CW and these producers is, you know that phrase of don't show, don't tell? Well, they show and then also tell. Look, guys, I understand you're, you're putting it together a really nice scene. Uh, you're putting the themes together correctly. I get it. You don't also have to pinpoint what you're saying by having a character say it. And they do that again here, uh, particularly with the narration. Uh, there's really no need uh, for a lot of this narration. Um, it doesn't push the story forward. It doesn't help understand anything. Like, everything's here. Like, it, it's really unnecessary. And that's my least favorite kind of, like, uh, narration. And thankfully, it's not too much all over this uh, episode, but it's enough to be annoying. Uh, and some of the dialogue, some of the, also has this kind of exposition problem. And, I do understand that's probably a issue dealing with a first episode, a pilot. You gotta explain a lot of stuff and get the audience on board with what you're doing and where you're going, your mission statement, where the characters have been, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. That stuff is kind of like hard to do in like first episodes of TV shows, first issues of comics. You have to do quite a bit of heavy lifting uh, on that. So I can forgive, but you know, that's not something we can keep going. Uh, and maintain. Like, if they do narration more often than the series, they need to be a little bit more fluid with the way that's written. Uh, the one thing I did like about the narration was that at the end, we discover she's actually talking to somebody. It's not just narration for narration's sake. It's a letter for Bruce Wayne. So, that does make sense. Uh, my hope is if they continue that, I hope there's just some a little bit more emotion in the script um, because that doesn't help Ruby Rose's uh, acting because that's real hard dialogue to act. It's like Harrison Ford once said, just because you can write it doesn't mean you can say it. And yeah, that, I mean, that's, I would definitely say that's a, a bit of an issue. Uh, Overall, I really like this. I thought it was a good first step into uh, Batwoman. Um, I've not been the biggest fan of the CW things. There's some stuff I like, some thought I, um, some I haven't liked, frankly. Uh, but you know, this definitely does speak to me. I do like you know the Bat universe uh, quite a bit, and it's nice to see Kate, you know, get some love here. Uh, I'm very curious to see what kind of like characters uh, will be uh, putting her against some of her characters, I assume, and it'd be cool if she could get some second-tier Batman villains. Much like Supergirl has been kind of mining Superman's entire rogues gallery, it'd be cool to see uh, Kate take on some of, like, Batman's secondary villains that have probably been hanging around Gotham and are still doing stuff, uh, like Mr. Zazz, or the Ventriloquist, uh, or Magpie, there's a few others, you know, she could, like, uh, face on, like, a low-budget, you know, TV show like this. Uh, so, yeah, that's my thought. I think uh, if I were to give this a rating out of, uh, out of five RAM chips, I'd probably give it four out of five. Uh, pretty good start. Uh, I'm definitely going to be watching this show, and I'm curious to see uh, where it goes from here. Uh, I think that's it. So, I guess the only thing... I have to say is, um, you know, if she never fights a guy named Ratfink trying to get a atomic hearing aid, I guess I might be a little disappointed. 
Oh well, what did you think, the viewers at home? Did you uh, like the episode? Did you uh, hate it? Did you love it? Uh, a whole nine yards. Uh, do you agree with me? Uh, is there anything I missed about the uh, episode you want to uh, you know, hear me discuss? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be doing a review of the show uh, weekly. I'll be doing another one uh, next week as we'll talk about the, the series as it continues. So, uh, we do a channel here. If you uh, like this video, click like. Uh, you can click subscribe and click the notification bell to get notifications about uh, future Comic Universe videos. Also, uh, I am also a video guy. I have a uh, video guy. That's a technical term. I also have a YouTube channel called The Real Manos. Uh, you may want to take a step over there and you know, see what I do. Uh, and I think that's it for now. Yeah, I think that's it. Push the button, Lindsay.